than uh, writer director Ryan Johnson. for doing this but mostly thank you guys I know you guys had to email in for tickets I know you had to line up early I'm sure a lot of you had to you had to schlep out here and travel I really really appreciate you guys being here I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you guys episode seven uh, to be a little different uh, for episode eight meaning like you were dealt basically a hand where uh, Luke is on an island you have Kylo you have all these characters in motion and I'm just curious if you could go and adjust anything from episode seven, would you have done, would you say, oh, I wish Ray was doing this, or I wish, you know? Well, I'm, I mean, not in the bigger sense, because just because I, part of the reason I, I got, you know, I kind of jumped into all this was I, I, I read the script for seven, and I thought, oh my God, this is exciting, really great. There were, though, JJ was really gracious, there was one, little thing that I have talked about before that um, I asked if he could change. Originally, it was BB-8 that came with Ray to the islands on the Falcon, and R2 stayed behind. And I just asked him if he could, it was like one, would affect one shot, and I asked him if he could switch the droids, and he was super, super gracious and, and, and did that. And um, yeah, but that was, that's that's really, that's really it. That's the, yeah. Deleted. I'm not just trying to sell Blu-rays. I promise. We have a lot of, a lot of deleted scenes. A lot. We have deleted sequences. There's a whole. Um, there's two big sequences that are kind of the big hero pieces of it. Um, one is a whole other kind of. Um, it's not really like a lesson, but it's a whole other big thing between Ray and and Luke on the island um, uh, that involves like a. a a caretaker bit, but, but you see this village where the caretaker creatures, like the nun fish creatures, uh, live. And it's, uh, anyway, it's, it, 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 it's, a, it's a sequence I always really loved. It's a really beautiful sequence. And um, it was one of those things, it was one of those sequences where, and this always happens at some point in the edit, you just kind of suddenly, it's like you can see through the ma matrix and you're like, oh my God, that big sequence that, I love so much, and I can't imagine the movie without, if we lift it out and put these two things together, it plays in a slightly different way, but it plays better. And you just kind of have that, oh, shit, and you <laughs> hit delete. And we, and you know, the, you don't think about like all this stuff that we actually built on set to get the shots. You don't think about all the work, the actors and the crew that you just hit one button and it's gone and the movie works better. So. Uh, before we go further, how long is that sequence? It's a few, uh, Ram, Ram, my producer is over there. It's, uh, I don't know, it's three, four minutes long, I think. Yeah, and then there's another big sequence where Rose and Finn and DJ are sneaking through the Mega Destroyer, um, which is just a really fun, funny little sequence, I think. And that's another, like, four minutes or something. Yeah, five, he's saying, give me the five. Right. <laughs> I bet uh, oh, I took a lot of pictures, so even that, it's all right. Uh, are there, Easter eggs in the movie that have still not been discovered. I uh, I'm sure there are. There's a lot. We we are nerds and we have a lot of time <laughs> in prep and in the other room. Well, and especially VFX people. VFX people stash stuff in there yeah. all the time. But on the other hand, though, I haven't been. Um, I don't think I should probably ever go on Reddit again. So I haven't read any uh, deep dives. I'm sure everything somebody has probably found at some point. Um, yeah, that's my guess. But but I, I there are things that I know that I haven't seen pointed out. So there are some Easter eggs. Uh, oh, there's a ton of Easter eggs in there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like I said, we're we're nerds with lots of times so time on our hands. So. Is there any sequence or shot in the movie that fans should be looking for? At the next, <laughs> next I see what you're doing here, you sneaky look. Yeah. Right. Uh, this is called drilling down. <laughs> no, I think honestly, I, I, uh, uh, I, 
for me, I think the fun of Easter eggs is the Easter egg hunt. So I'm not going to be that parent that's like, <laughs> look behind the piano. <laughs> uh, I love ones. And how did you know, let's talk about putting it together. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that sequence was, uh, it was, it was, it was fun on several levels. Like the fight stuff was really fun. The design element of that set, that was one of my favorite sets because we actually, um, it was, uh, it's one of the few sets that's almost entirely a practical build. The, um, the throne room, the reflective floor, and then we actually stretched red fabric all the way around. And so when you walked onto that set, it looked really the way it does in the movie. You stepped out of the elevator, you walked down that little hall, and it was just red, just so striking and beautiful. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I, I mean, the Rick Heinrichs, our, uh, our production designers, did an amazing job with it. And then in terms of the scene that happens before it, it was fun with the actors because it's a scene where um, each one of them has, you, you, you it's fun also just directing and figuring out like shot wise whose perspective you're with at different points because each one of them thinks something different is happening in, in the scene and um, just working it out so both with, both with the writing but also with the coverage that the audience is getting that as clearly as they possible and, and getting the information um, you know when they're supposed to be getting it. I remember Tess spending, even though Adam spends 80% of the scene sitting, kneeling like this, looking blankly, apparently, uh, he's not. He's actually like, I spent a lot of time with Adam going through what he knows when, what his agenda is when he walks in, how much, at what point does he make the decision, here's my chance, at what point, is, what is he thinking at, their, at different points in the scene. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask, if I could ask a, a yeah. follow-up. When he walks in that room, does he know what he's going to do, or is he making that decision in the moment? Well, my take on this is also the sort of thing I don't know if I mean I I know what I think. I don't know if it's my place to say at this point though. I feel like the movie and the scenes like that and kind of the um... I only ask because you're the writer director. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you guys know what I mean, right? I don't know. I can I can give my take on it, but it doesn't. I guess now that the movie is out there and belongs to you guys, my take is take it take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But in my mind, he walks in there knowing basically that he is going to uh, betray Snoke and look for an opportunity, but he doesn't yet know exactly what the mechanism is and what his opportunity is going to be. But he's gone in there with the intent of whether it's now or whether it's later or whenever it is when he brings ray in there he's had that connection with her and what he says in the elevator from that in my head i thought okay he knows he's going to do this he doesn't know how yet and when he sees that opportunity of that lightsaber next to him and sees snoke distract you know sees snoke obviously like distracted and up and realizes he can give this an attempt he goes for it because yeah, i believe there's dialogue there where he says I know what I have to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I, I love that sequence. We'll talk a little bit about the actual lightsaber stuff in the fight. Oh yeah, because yeah. people are playing more about it. But, uh, so. but uh, obviously, like you know, you came into Breaking Bad when it was already a very beloved, um, very popular franchise, or, or at least uh, the series. So, and then Star Wars, you know, that's that times ten, especially with such a devoted fan base. So, can you kind of compare what it was like? Um, going from Breaking Bad to Star Wars, like what did you, what was similar, what was different about it? Like, did, did, what were the things that you learned and kind of that Breaking Bad prepared you for Star Wars? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, I think that in, in terms of the first thing you said about them both being like these beloved things, and when you come into them, I guess, I don't know, I guess, I guess the, the thing that was true of Breaking Bad that is also true of this is um, even if that's the case, maybe especially if it's the case. Um, you can't come into it with that being any kind of big factor in your head. You have to come in and make the story work and make it feel real and get, you know, I don't know, it, 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 uh, that, that was something that the whole Breaking Bad crew I think did really well all the way up until the end is just doing their thing and keeping it on track um, and not getting sidetracked by kind of the, 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 the world outside the telling their story, basically. Um, and in terms of, I mean, I, I, I learned so much from working on that show. I mean, uh, everything from the writers to the actors. Um, it was, 
yeah, I, I don't know if I could even pick one thing, but I feel like it was, uh, it did, it did, I guess it, it was nice to be able to come into something from the outside and feel like you could find your way into it creatively, I guess. Yeah. There was also a lot of listening, you know, and it was a lot of, uh, it wasn't me just trying to convince him of, you know, of anything. It was, it was me really taking seriously that this guy, you know, obviously, you know, this is Mark Hamill. This, this character has been a part of his life for all these years, you know. Um, so it was a lot of listening, it was a lot of talking, and it was a long process. But it was a really good one, and by the end of it, you know, he committed to it, and I think the performance that he gives on screen, and in that scene specifically, it always, it, I, I always found it so powerful, you know. But yeah, it's a, I don't know if that answers the question. No, no. Yeah. All right. Uh, jump. <laughs> <laughs>